golf fanatics it's billy ho here for another pga course preview the upcoming farmers insurance open we head to san diego la joya uh, california this is going to be your first strategy session for not only dfs play but maybe your one and done picks i'm going to give you a comprehensive course overlook flyovers we got two golf courses to cover this week uh so basically it's going to help you hit the ground running for your weekly research. Uh, this includes the breakdown of the North course and the South course at Torrey Pines, where we're gonna be playing this week. Uh, we're gonna be identifying the players that best, best fit that course and uh, with the most uh, chances to make those birdies and streaks and for DraftKings purposes and uh, get you up there, hopefully top five and winners for one and done. So before we get going, if you are a horse racing fan, or maybe just a casual fan that really gets into the Kentucky Derby and Triple Crown, Billy Ho Sports is where you need to be. I've got all the preview videos coming up for all the latest contenders, all major stakes racing. Uh, this weekend had some uh, big derby preps. We are just getting on the derby trail, so check the playlists I've got set up for you. Uh, I got PGA course previews. If you ever want to go back and look at previous preview videos, I got a 2024 preview list. So, you know, a year from now when it's coming up on Farmers again, you can go back and look at this video and say, damn, look how good, you know, how good of a preview video this was. Pat himself on the back. <laughs> All right. So other than that, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Uh, smash that like button for me. Much appreciated. Set those notification bells too so you don't miss anything. And in the comment section, I say, let's see, what's what's going to be your low-key pivot play in the 9K, 9,000 range on DraftKings? And uh, once pricing comes out tomorrow, Billy Ho Contest will be live. We need to get that, start getting that thing filled. It's only 50 people that need to get in it. So I know more than 50 people watch this video. I'll post the link in the description whenever we uh, get around to the pricing coming out, uh, hopefully Monday. And uh, other than that, Let's get her started. I guess I am talking a little bit more in my farmer's voice being from Louisville, Kentucky, uh, but uh, trying not to. I do got kind of a farmer looking shirt on, so we're going to try to get into the uh, the effect, even though it is in sunny California and San Diego, which, you know, it is what it is. But this is going to be wake up call time for the PGA. No more baby town, little league bullshit with uh, everyone shooting nine under every every round they play, just like this Amex tournament last week that is just driving me nuts because the weather is so good. One second, your guy's up there leading. Five seconds later, he's 25th place. So uh, that's going to end this week. Much more challenging uh, course coming up for you. So winning score is going to be approximately mid-teens, 13 to 15 under. Max Homa and Keegan Bradley both last year shot six under pars, which was hot fire, uh, crushed the course. If you would have had them in showdown last year, you would have mauled everybody. You got six under guys in today's showdown, you probably ain't sniffing men catch. So that's that's going to be kind of the difference that we're going to be up against. So Torrey Pines, coastal course. Uh, we'll have everything from the marine layer and the AM, which might cause delays, so keep that in mind. And also afternoon wind gusts will be swirling around. Once I kick off the flyover in a minute, you're going to see just how coastal the course is and what the layout is. I got a couple of hopefully extra tidbits to add that you will not hear on another show. So this week will mark the second leg of the West Coast Swing. Another best of the rest uh, tournament. This was an elevated event last year, but it's not this year. $9 million purse, $6.2 million to the victor. Standard 36 hole cut, but due to daylight constraints uh, and field size, we play two courses Thursday and Friday. They tee off at 1 and 10, 
And uh, there's a north course and a south course. I'm going to show you both extensively, more so on the south course, because that's the course, if they qualify for the weekend, they'll play three times. So people will refer to the north courses as NC. If you look at past leaderboards, you'll see NC and SC for north and south course. Uh, the layout doesn't look all that different when you start seeing this flyover. But what you're going to be able to tell when you take a deeper look is, uh, you know, like it looks similar on the surface, obviously. But what you're going to see deeper look is the 7,258 yard par 72 layout, much shorter course to play. And that is largely due to the par five difference. The par fives on this golf course on the north are significantly shorter. I'll get to that in a few minutes. Uh, the course was redesigned by Tom Weisskopf in 2018 to specifically make it easier for your average player to go out there and play because you already had the South course. So you need you need something that your average weekend hacker can go out there and, and navigate. So one of the difference, they removed uh, approximately 18 to 20 bunkers. So there's half as many bunkers on the north course as there is the south it's like 40 to 80 sort of that scenario uh that is the bunkering is also different the bunkering uh green fewer green side bunkers uh but the green side bunkers are smaller shallower easy to play out of average tour golfer most of us can't hack our way out of a wet paper bag much less get out of some deep rolling sand bunker like a pga tour professional so Keep that in mind. Uh, the green size was increased from 4,500 to 6,000 square feet uh, to make them easier for approach shots. And finally, like I said, the difficulty of the par fives, the north courses run from mid, uh, the mid 500 yard range, 525, 545, that, things of that nature. Easily reachable in two by most of your standard PGA Tour professionals making it ideal for you'll hear showdown uh, contests. If you play Thursday round one or round two showdown, you want to target guys on the north course, at least five out of six guys, because that's where you, all your Eagles opportunities are going to be because they can get home in two on those par fives. The par fours are easier. There's less likely of bogeys and doubles and worse. So all that stuff, generally easier course to score on, right? All right. Straightforward driving padding the stats that's that's kind of how you get to 15 under a lot of times on this golf course is because players will go out and shoot four or five under on the north course and then just kind of tread water the rest of the way uh two three under maybe four under on the south course so on the other hand the south course 7765 yards Par 72, narrow ryegrass fairways, smaller greens, 5,000 square feet of poa grass. I failed to mention the north course is pure bent grass. They put that in in 2018, so it's nice and soft and easily puttable now. So they've got easy putting greens for your average tour professionals. That's another point. So poa grass demands more precision. Uh, evident from the flyover, the bunkers on this course are nothing short of diabolical. I mean, the ones around the green are those deep uh, greenside bunkers, rolling edges, making par saves difficult, even for the best of the sand players. So uh, the, the south course also features seven par fours at 450 plus yards. All four par fives extend beyond 560 yards with a couple of them 606 plus. Holes 9 and 13 are virtually unreachable in two. Those par fives, uh, both courses share that long, thick Kakuya grass rough that you'll get sick of hearing about. Uh, so players that miss the fairway are almost penalized a half a stroke off the bat, uh, hacking it out, trying to advance the ball. That's where wedge game will come into play. Layups will happen. So uh, in addition to those long irons you're going to hear everybody preaching about, 175 to 200 and 240 plus. I don't know why people care so much about approach shots from 240 yards out. It's, they're just going for the green in two. They're going to get up there any way you can go. So 
Anyway, many holes have crosswinds that's going to knock those approach shots around and wayward. Uh, hole number six, 41% birdie rate. I think it's the easiest of the par fives. Reachable in two. Although bunkers do guard the greens, uh, they offer a nice little bailout spot. If you do miss the green, that way you can just have a nice little up and down for a birdie. Uh, also, eagles are doable, so that's always a plus. Hole 13 uh, is the is one of the harder par fives, only a 30% birdie rate. What they've done with that is they've had addition of new tee boxes to make the drives even lengthier, and you have to hit long drives off the tee to have any chance of getting home in two. But guess what? The fairway is narrower. It's guarded by bunkers on both sides. So you've landed in one of those bunkers, it's an automatic layup. Uh, now, going on to hole 18 and you'll see this on the flyover i don't know if i'm timing this right or not but hole 18 fairway bunkers the same way pose that threat but if you you can skillfully navigate around them then it creates that huge risk reward shot coming home because that pond right in front of the green on 18 is guarding it uh making it quite the challenging finishing hole but kind of uh creating some drama on sunday so uh can't wait for that so that's basically the course layout as I see it. Now getting into uh, a stat model, uh, I'm not really going to get too cute with one this week. I'm going to keep it pretty simple. Distance off the tee mixed with good drives gained. Uh, those two will be a major stat. General strokes gained approach. Uh, and maybe, I don't know, I might look at who's who's good at 175 to 200, you know, and who's good from, from the uh, ranges. Cause you can see somewhere along the way, you'll see the approach shot distribution of, of the uh, amount of shots hit from each distance on approach. Also par five scoring obviously is the best place to make birdies and, and get those uh, Eagles if possible. So par five scoring is going to be cranked up. So, uh, Really, I'm I'm pretty sure you're aware of all the stats, and you'll hear them all. And what, if you watch any kind of other preview videos, you're going to see all the stats required. But I'm just going to put up some simple breakdown of percentages and a, st a simple stat model that you'll kick off with. But one thing I will do, like I said, I'm going to focus a little more on sand saves and not so much on putting. Because guys like Luke List won this tournament a couple years ago. Uh, uh, so you don't really have to be the most hot fire putter. You just have to be pretty decent and, and make your pars and not screw up the par fives is basically how you can win this golf tournament. So course history is, is important at a place we play every year, but not as important this year. As you'll note, last year's winner, Mike Homa, missed the cut in 2022. Uh, going back to putting, I probably would look at a rolling report like Fantasy National or, you know, there's lots of places that you can look at to see a regression of of uh, who's leading up to, you know, 12 rounds, 24 rounds, 36, all the way up to 100 and see who's get going from 50th rank to 32nd rank to 22nd rank to 10th rank. You know, or maybe the last eight rounds, he's eighth ranked. So he's regressing toward having a really good putting week, even though maybe he's not the best putter out there. Things like that. Uh, bunker play, also scrambling. So uh, anyway, I'm going to focus my attention that way. Guys that can grind out pars, take care of business on the par fives. Long ball hitters, good ball strikers like the Luke Lists of the world, Max Homa, when he gets his drive on, Max Homa can get a little wonky with the driver, but when Max Homa's hitting the driver, he cranks on all cylinders because he's a really good short game and putter. So that's pretty much what led him to win last year. A lot of those types of guys are coming in in good form. Guys who've won here before coming in good form. I'm going to put a list of those guys up too because some of them I'm interested in definitely DFS-wise and probably a few that I'll be interested in playing in one and done. Hint, hint. And uh, lastly, guys in the top 50 is what I'll be looking at this week. Guy like Keegan Bradley, who who fired that additional 66 along with Homa, that finished two shots behind in second. 
he had one bad round on the north course for some reason. Uh, but that's how Keegan is. Keegan's a grinder. Keegan's been playing really good golf for the last probably 18 months straight at least. So he he is definitely a great course fit here. Uh, so guys like that. And just to put a bow on the preview, uh, we all know or we've heard if you follow DFS, Xander Schauffele is a lo the local boy. They talked about him, San Diego State grad, coming in hometown boy. I remember three or four years ago when Xander was first hot on the scene and everything, he like missed his first two or three cuts out here. And they said, well, you struggle bus and all that. And I think he got a second place finish. So he's got, he's, he's got like veteran status now. He's been in, in uh, been around so long. So guys like him, but there's other guys you might not know of like JJ spawn also grad from SDSU and uh footnote, Charlie Hoffman went to uh Poe high school just 30 minutes uh, from the golf course. So Charlie Hustle is a guy uh, that I would kind of be rooting for. And he's got some good course history in the past. He's just getting a little long in the tooth. And he's a struggle bus with the putter as well. So uh, that's going to do it for the course preview. The best course preview out there. Tell a friend about it. Tell three about Billy Ho Sports. Much appreciated. And uh, until the next time, we will see you soon.